All right, so this is what your classwork looks like for today. What I want you to do first before you listen to the read aloud is I want you to um, just look at this image and write down something that you notice and something that you are wondering and jot that down here. And then you have your first read aloud um, for our text, uh, River of Words. Um, so again, this week is actually going to be your last week of videos. So um, the work will look a little bit lighter. Um, so I want you to really listen to the stories carefully. I'm going to be reading a different book to you every day from today to Thursday. So um, please make sure you are reading along and I'm going to have the book available on Google Classroom as well so that you can read it on your own time. If you want to do a preview of the book, look through the pages on your own first to see what you notice before listening to the read aloud, um, that works as well. Um, so that will be available on the classroom um, page as well as your classwork for today. A River of Words, the story of William Carlos Williams, written by Jen Bryant, illustrated by Melissa Sweet. When he wrote poems, he felt as free as the Passaic River as it rushed to the falls. Willie's notebooks filled up one after another. Willie's words gave him freedom and peace, but he also knew he needed to earn a living. So when he grew up, he went off to medical school and became a doctor, one of the busiest men in town. Yet he never stopped writing poetry. In this picture book biography of poet William Carlos Williams, Jen Bryant's engaging prose and Melissa Sweet's stunning mixed media illustrations celebrate the amazing man who found a way to earn a living and to honor his calling to be a poet. Okay, so we know that the genre is a biography and we know that the illustrator uses mixed media illustrations, which just means different types of art. So even here you can see that there are some pieces of paper or tape here, as well as some um, markings that could be from crayons or color pencils. And then we see here that there could be some um, possibly watercolor um, or paint. Okay. So here are some of his poems. The Wood Thrush, Fortunate Man, It Is Not Too Late, The Wood Thrush, Flies Into My Garden. Before the snow, he looks at me silent without moving. His dappled breast reflecting, tragic winter, thoughts my love my own. The red wheelbarrow, so much depends upon a red wheelbarrow, glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. This is just to say, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet, and so cold. The great figure. Among the rain and lights, I saw the figure five in gold on a red fire truck moving tense, unheeded to gong clangs, siren howls, and wheels rumbling through the dark city. Metric figure. There is a bird in the poplars. It is the sun. The leaves are little yellow fish swimming in the river. The bird skims above them, day is on his wings, Phoebus. It is he that is making the great gleam among the poplars. It is his singing outshines the noise of leaves clashing in the wind. A River of Words. When I was younger, it was plain to me, I must make something of myself. William Carlos Williams, Pastoral. Like the other boys in Rutherford, New Jersey, Willie Williams loved to play baseball and to race his friends up and down the street. But when the other boys went inside, Willie stayed outside. Climbing over the fence in his backyard, he wandered alone through the woods and fields. In those days, just beyond town, there were still many pla wild places for Willie to explore. My Willie has sharp eyes. He notices everything, his mother told the neighbors. And it was true. As he walked through the high grasses and along the soft dirt paths, Willie watched everything. When he grew tired, he stretched out beside the Passaic River, 
Gurgle, gurgle. Swish, swish, swish. Gurgle, gurgle. The water went slipping and sliding over the smooth rocks, then poured in a torrent over the falls, then quieted again below. The river's music both excited and soothed Willie. Sometimes, as he listened to its perfect tune, he fell asleep. As Willie grew older, there was less time to wander through the woods and fields or to nap by the river. In high school, Willie had classes and track practice and lots of homework. Willie is always in a hurry, his mother told the neighbors, and it was true. But when Mr. Abbott read poetry to Willie's English class, Willie did not feel hurried. The gentle sounds and shifting rhythms of the poems were like the music of the river. As the teacher read each line, Willie closed his eyes and let them make pictures in his mind. One night alone in his room, Willie began to write his own poems. At first, he imitated the famous English writers he had learned about in school. He counted the beats in each line and made the endings rhyme. The archer is awake, the swan is flying, gold against blue, an arrow is lying. Poetry suited Willie. Every night he looked forward to sitting at his desk and writing a few new lines. But after a while, he grew frustrated. He had pictures in his mind that didn't fit exactly into steady rhythms or rhymes. I've never seen a swan or an archer, Willie thought. I want to write about ordinary things. Plums, wheelbarrows and weeds, fire engines, children and trees. Things I see when I walk down my street or look out my window. So Willie tried writing a new way. Instead of counting the beats or making the end words rhyme, he let each poem find its own special shape on the page. There is a bird in the poplars. It is the sun. The leaves are little yellow fish swimming in the river. Let's take a look. Now, when he wrote poems, he felt as free as the Passaic River as it rushed to the falls. Willie's notebooks filled up one after another. My boy is a good writer, his mother said, and it was true. Unfortunately, no one paid much money for poetry, and Willie needed to earn a living. The little sparrows hopped ingenuously about the pavement, quarreling, with sharp voices over things that interest them. Willie's mother had told him stories about her older brother, Carlos, who was a doctor. When our father died, she told Willie, Carlos's salary provided for a whole family. Willie liked the idea of healing people and of providing for a family, but could he do both and still write poetry? Dreams are not a bad thing. I am moved to write poetry. So much depends upon labor. At age 19, Willie went off to study medicine at the university, where he met Ezra Pound, Hilda Doolittle, and Charles DeMuth. Ezra and H.D. were studying literature while Charlie studied painting. The friends spent much afternoons together discussing books, music, and art. The harder Willie's medical training became, the more he enjoyed the time he spent with them. Look at that luminous detail. There's that vocabulary word we've learned before. Among the rain and lights, I saw the figure five in gold on a red moving truck. Tents unheeded to gong clangs, siren howls, and wheels rumbling through the dark city. Notice all the different ways you see five here. When he graduated, he returned to Rutherford and hung his sign, William C. Williams, MD, Family Medicine. Every morning, Dr. Willie Williams filled his black bag with medicines and instruments and drove off to, their, to visit patients in their homes. Every afternoon, he returned to his office where more patients waited. 
They call me and I go. The door opens, I smile, enter. All day he delivered babies, healed hurts and bruises, set broken bones and wrote prescriptions for coughs and fevers. Dr. Williams is the busiest man in town, said the neighbors, and it was true. But no matter how many babies he delivered, no matter how many sick people he cured, Willie could not stop writing poems. So you see here, so much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. Here it is again, here it is again, here it is again. On his prescription pads, he scribbled a few lines whenever and wherever he could. In those precious times, the rhythm of the river he had rested beside as a child seemed to guide him. Like the water that sometimes ran slow, smooth, and steady, and other times came rushing in a hurried flood, Willie's lines flowed across the page. After his long doctor's day, Willie climbed to the attic where he kept a lamp and a desk. Filled with letters from his artist friends and notes he'd made about things he'd heard, seen, or done. As the rest of Rutherford, Rutherford put out its lights, Willie took out his pen and his notes. He sat down and looked at the words. This is just to say I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet, and so cold. So you see how it's on different types of paper? And this is also all these different types of paper. This looks like it was painted on top of another paper that had our design on it already. And shape them into poems. And the moon is tilted and half gone. The moon, the dried weeds, and the Pleiades. Seven feet tall, the dark dried weed stalks make a part of the night, a red lace on a blue milky sky. Right by a small lamp, the plates are almost nameless. Right. So here is our little back blurb. As you can see here, we have dates that are bolded or years that are bolded, which tells us that this is going to be a timeline. So let's take a look. So this seems like it is William Carlos's, Williams's life, and here are world events during his life. So let's see. All right, so 1883, William Carlos Williams is born in Rutherford, New Jersey. 1884, his brother Edgar Ed Williams is born. 1897, he studies at private schools in Switzerland and France, attends high school in New York City. 1902, begins medical school at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, makes friends with painter Charles DeMuth and poets Ezra Pound and Hilda Doolittle, writes poetry in his spare time. 1906, he begins his three-year medical internship at hospitals in New York City, continues to write and maintain close friendships with other young artists. During this time, you see here Orville and Wilbur Wright fly the first airplane. Okay. 1909, studies medicine in Germany and travels through Europe. His first verse collection, Poems, is printed and published by a friend. It sells only four copies. Color photography is invented. The first Model T car sold. 1910, begins his medical practice in Rutherford, New Jersey, specializing in pediatrics and obstet obstetrics. 1912, marries Florence Flossie Herman. Talking motion pictures, invented movies. Purchases a house at Nine Ridge Road in Rutherford, which serves as both his home and his office. His first son, William Eric Williams, is born. It's also when World War I begins. 1916, he writes his famous poem, The Great Figure, which later becomes the inspiration for Charles de Moot's painting, The Figure Five in Gold. 1916, his second son is born. 1918, Meets and befriends poet Marion Moore, who shares William's interests in both poetry and science. 
Then 1925, he joins the Passaic General Hospital staff but continues in private practice. This is also when Charles Lindbergh crosses the Atlantic Ocean nonstop. 1934, um, publishes collected poems, 1921 to 1931. By this time, Williams has published 13 books of poetry and prose. The stock market crashes, World War II begins. Um, 1935 to 1945, he continues to create poetry and prose based on everyday scenes and the common working class experience of his patients. He publishes eight more books of poetry and prose, including White Mule and Life Along the Passaic River. The electronic digital computer is invented, and then modern color television is also invented. 1946, he publishes first of five books of his epic poem, Patterson. Um, Others follow in 1948, 1949, 1951, and 1958. 1941 is also when the U.S. enters World War II. 1945 is when the U.S. drops atomic bomb on Hiroshima and World War II ends. 1950 receives the National Book Award for his selected poems and Fort Patterson Book 3. 1951 to 1952, several strokes leave him unable to pursue his medical duties. He recovers well enough to pursue new writing projects and to lecture, named consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress. 1954 to 1960, despite fragile health, he continues to write. He receives and mentors younger poets at his home including Robert Creeley, James Wright, Galway, Cannell, Robert Lowell, Allen Ginsberg, and Denise Levertov. 1962, he published, publishes his 48th book and his last poetry collection, Pictures from Bruegel. 1963, William Carlos Williams dies at his home in Rutherford. In May, he posthumously awarded the, he is posthumously awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Pictures from Bruegel. So this word just means after his death. Um, also in 1963, John F. Kennedy, president of the United States, is assassinated. All right. So I'm going to read you the author's note and illustrator's note, um, especially since we've been talking about um, the author and the illustrator and their significance um, when reading a text. William Carlos Williams was a family doctor in his hometown of Rutherford, New Jersey, for more than 40 years. He specialized in pediatrics, care of children, and obstetrics, obstetrics uh, which is delivering babies. Uh, records indicate that he presided over more than 3,000 births. Like most doctors of his time, Williams made house calls, spending his days and some nights, too, caring for the sick in their homes. During the Great Depression, when many adults were unemployed and families could not afford to pay, Williams helped them anyway. Often after stitching a wound, dispensing medicine for a fever, or helping a woman deliver her child after a long night's labor, he would leave with a homemade scarf, a jar of jam, or a warm casserole as payment. Despite the constant demands of his profession, Williams always made time for poetry. In his earliest verses, he adopted the methods of traditional English poets, who focus on grand topics and use regular patterns of rhyme, which we've studied. Slowly, however, he developed his own distinctive style in which he used shorter lines, brief stanzas, and little or no punctuation. But perhaps his most important contribution to American poetry was his focus on everyday objects and the lives of common people. In his poems, readers can find fire trucks, cats, flower pots, plums, babies, construction workers, and refrigerators. By stripping away unnecessary details, Williams tried to see the thing itself with great intensity and perception. Although he wrote poems for most of his adult life, his poetry was not well known until he was in his 60s. By then, he had already published more than a dozen poetry books, as well as several volumes of essays, plays, and short stories. Today, William Carlos Williams is considered one of our most influential American poets, and his work is read and studied in schools and universities all over the world. Williams died in 1963 at the age of 79. Jen Bryant. Now the illustrator's note. Uh, William Carlos Williams' work was inadvertent, inadvertently introduced to me when I was seven years old. Living in northern New Jersey, not too far from where Williams grew up in Rutherford, my Brownie tro troop took a field trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. My souvenir for that day was a postcard of Charles de Muth's painting, The Figure Five in Gold. What I did not know all these 
all those years ago was that the painting was inspired by a poem William Carlos Williams wrote and shared with Demuth, his longtime friend. Later, even though I had heard the poem, I somehow never connected the two until this manuscript came to me. The research for this book took me to Rutherford Public Library in Rutherford, New Jersey, where there's a wonderful collection related to William's life and work. <clears throat> the librarians there were patient and generous with their time. I want to especially thank Jane Fisher, director, for showing me photographs, letters, and some of the accoutrements of his life, his desk, typewriter, and straw hat, and for her expertise. I saw William's house at Nine Ridge Road, just down the street from the library, and spent time taking pictures and drawing in nearby Patterson, New Jersey. The artwork for every book calls for a different interpretation. These pictures needed to convey his era and the modern art of his time that was so influential to Williams. There were a lot of false starts. Nothing I did seemed powerful enough to match his poems. Then I looked to a big box of discarded books I had from a library sale. One of the books had beautiful end papers, and I did a small painting on it. Then I took a book cover, ripped it off, and painted more. The book covers became my canvas, and any ephemera I had been saving for one day became fodder for the collages. Every project furthers an artist, but this book was a true gift. So we know that these um, illustrations in this book, the mixed media is from Melissa Sweet's um, interpretations. It is not exactly William Carlos Williams work, right? Because he wrote the poems and she took what she was able to understand about his life and um, produce these beautiful illustrations. All right.